Amen. Hey, will you give the band a big round of applause for sharing their time and their talents? Hey, if you're ever interested in being a part of the band, make sure you find Zay. I know we're looking for some electric guitar players and anything else. So if you guys are interested in sharing your gifts, come check out with Zay, and he would love to have you be a part of that. Hey, are you guys okay with me sharing with you for a little bit? At the end of this, what I'm going to promise is you're going to have a chance to just lay down and relax and chill. Are you guys good with that? Okay, so give me just a few minutes here, and we'll, we'll dig into it. So, hey, Res Life. Good. Hey, uh, so it's, for the next couple of weeks, we are going to talk about this idea of worship, okay? Of worship. And so we did a little bit of that. But so commonly, if you've like grown up in church, the only thing that we associate with worship is music. And there's a lot of other things that go to worship, things that we can like worship on our own and things that we can enjoy. So I want to tell you, as I think back in my young life, the first thing that I had like great joy, that like this massive memory that I had great joy, that I jumped up and down and I ran around and I rejoiced about, are you guys ready for it? It was this. Super Mario Brothers. So I think I was like 10 or 12 years old and the Super Nintendo came out. And, and Drew had a good question. Most of the Super Nintendos came with Super Mario Brothers, but for whatever reason, mine didn't. And this was really rare. Like, um, some of you guys might have grandparents that give you, like, extravagant gifts. But, like, my grandparents weren't that people. They were, like, the $20 gift person, right? Which is really great that a grandparent would do that. But I remember I had opened all my gifts, and I really wanted Super Mario Brothers, and, and it wasn't there. And it came around to my grandparents' gift, and I was like, you know, I mean, Grandma and Grandpa always give me, like, a nice pair of socks or, like, a scarf you know, and then like a $10 bill, which is really sweet. So I was like, man, my dreams of Super Mario Brothers are gone. But here it is. I open up the gift. And Super Mario Brothers is mine! I remember like running around the living room like, thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma. And I ran over and gave her like a huge hug, and I was so excited. It was a used... No, it wasn't used. Um... So here's why I bring it up. Like when we talk about worship, it talk, we talk about like adoration and being so excited for something in our lives that we're just going to give all of our excitement to whatever created that. And for me, it was my grandparents and Super Mario Brothers. So now like I wish I was a gamer because I do appreciate games, but I'm the guy that's like really, 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 really bad. Like, really bad. Like, if there's, like, a shooter game, I just, like, wander around. I'm like, where am I? Oh, I'm dead. Oh, where? Uh, I'm dead. So I just have kind of given up on playing games. But here's the thing for me that always brings out the awe. This moment where I'm just like, wow, that is amazing. And so for me, it's travel. And specifically, like, being outside. So can I share with you one of my experiences I got to do this year? I got to go back to one of my favorite places in the world. It's called Zion National Park. Anybody ever been to Zion National Park? Oh, it's beautiful. So I was there, and a couple years ago, I got to go, and I hiked this thing called Angel's Landing. But I didn't get to do this hike called the Narrows. And the Narrows is this river that you walk in for miles upon miles upon miles and so here's part of the Narrows. It's this amazing canyon that has been carved by wind and water. And you can walk like 14 miles in the water in this thing. It take, and it's really slippery. And the water is super clear. And there's this, these huge canyons on each side. And all I, all I could do is just keep walking and like what's around the next corner. And I'd come around the next corner and I would just go, whoa, how? How is this created? Like, how is this even a thing? How is this, and how am I standing here? So here's the thing. There's, there's this definition of worship that, like, Pastor Adam gives us in, the, in a book that he wrote. And it says, worship suggests something or someone is recognized as worthy of honor. So when we talk about God and we talk about the Bible, we can go all the way back to the beginning. And God did what? God created everything. 
If you were in my Sunday school class this week, we were talking about this, and sometimes we think that like science and like faith and religion can't go together. But I think it's actually beautiful when we can consider the fact that God, who's this amazing creator that can create all things, creates amazing canyons like Zion National Park, creates amazing video games like Super Mario Brothers, that God created us and is worthy of our honor and our praise and our worship and our excitement. So sometimes, uh, I definitely know in the 80s, there was this cool word named rad. We use this word called rad. But the word awesome became used for everything. Like everything we were like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. And what I want you to think about is when you use the word awesome, that it is for the most amazing, creative, special outstanding thing that you've ever seen. And it could be for a guy like Aaron Judge hitting 62 home runs. Like, that was awesome. And it can be for a canyon in the middle of Utah. And it can be for the most amazing dinner that you've ever tasted. And here's why. Because our God was part of creating every one of those things. Now, molecularly, did God, like, make Aaron Judge to hit home runs? Ah, that can be a long discussion. Caleb's like, yes, amen. But God created a person like Aaron Judge with drive and passion and strength to do something like that. God created amazing chefs to put weird things together that tasted better than anything you've ever tasted before. And let me tell you this, friends, eyeballs right here. God created you exactly how you were, and it is awesome. And God can be praised and worshiped and lifted up as something of honor that has done these amazing things. So in the scripture, there's all kinds of things that talk about this. Um, but one that you guys know that you may be seeing before is Psalm 23. Anybody read Psalm 23 before? I remember being in like preschool, like at four years old, and like we were taught Psalm 23. So we guys read this together for, with me. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. Now, many of us, when we talked about 2022 as an ice cream or as a movie or something like that, you said something was bad about 2022. It might have been the darkest valley for you. I will fear no evil. Let's say that again. One, two, three. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Y'all, you know, all these things in the darkness, in the light, in the awesome moments, God is our shepherd, and he walks with us in those things. And God deserves honor and worship and praise. So we're going to do that in a couple different ways. In your small groups today, you're going to have a chance to produce some art, which can be a reflection. It can be a worship activity. Many of you guys know that I was a music major. Anybody remember what my instrument was, what I majored in? The tuba. The tuba. The tuba. So I remember being in college, and I got to play a music piece by a composer named Samuel Barber. And during that time, uh, one of my friends said, hey, have you ever just laid down and closed your eyes and listened to it before? I'm like, uh, no, why? He's like, dude, it's awesome. There's that word again, it's awesome. So this is a strings piece, a full orchestral piece by a guy named, guy named Samuel Barber. So what I want you to do is I, I need you to spread out. You're gonna, you, need, you need enough room to lay down and not touch anybody else, okay? 
So you can scoot all the way over to the basketball court if you want. You can scoot all the way over to nine square if you want. But make sure you find space to lay down and spread out where you're not interrupted by anybody else. Okay, good. Now, everybody excited? The most important thing that's going to happen right now is that you are not a distraction to somebody else's experience. The full length part of this is nine minutes. We're not doing nine minutes. We're going to do about a minute and a half. But you can go home and you can do this on your own. It's on Spotify. I found it. Sarah Bay, lay down. Eyes closed. The most important thing is you're not a distraction to somebody else. Are we ready? All right, let's listen. Lord God, we thank you for being an amazing creator. Whether it be the amazing outdoors or art, or food, or music, or our friends, or our family. Lord, we are so thankful that you create beautiful, amazing, awesome things. Lord, may we learn to change our posture, to either lay down, to be on our knees, to raise our hands, to raise our voices, to worship you, to show you the honor for the awesome that you are. And all the people said, amen. <laughs>